Hello everyone, this is Lucretia Hayes, and today's question and answer session is about grants. The question was, how do you go about getting a grant for a nonprofit? Well, first of all, you of course have to be nonprofit. Um, a lot of times people who write to me, they have an idea, but they don't have a business organized yet, they don't have their nonprofit uh, status or any of that. So, let me just tell you from beginning to end, this is, this is the process. Let's say that you want to open a business called Charlie's Youth. First of all, you have to do your articles, and you have to file it with the Secretary of State in your state. And once it's organized as a business, and of course your articles have to be done a certain kind of way. I can't tell you everything, or else you wouldn't need me. But you have to do your articles a certain kind of way. You file it, you organize it as a business, you do all the technicals mm -hmm. and all of that. Then you go with the IRS and you apply for your nonprofit uh, status. Now there are some businesses that's been in business for a long time and you have, or not really a long time, but for a time, for a season, maybe a year or so, and now you're thinking that maybe you should have went nonprofit. You can apply also and there's two different kinds of fees uh, depending on if you're already established or not and, and some other technicals that you know we would get into in, a, in an actual one-on-one -on -one consult. But at, at any rate, you have to apply for the 501c3. Let me just say this, 501c3 is not the only nonprofit tax code with the IRS. It's just the most popular among certain, um, certain types of businesses and non other uh, nonprofit entities like churches. Now, when you apply for your 501c3, the IRS will review everything that you sent in and they'll determine yes or they'll determine no or maybe that they need more information. Now. Let's just say that you get a uh, yes. After you get your 501c3 with the IRS, then you're able to apply for any grant that's offered to a nonprofit that is doing whatever you're doing. Let's just say youth development. Well, all youth development grants that um, require you to have your nonprofit status, you're now eligible for. That doesn't mean you will get it. Just because you're a nonprofit and just because you write a grant proposal, it can be a banging grant proposal, does not mean you're going to get the grant. Grants are competitive. It's free money, but it's competitive. Let's just say you do apply for a youth development grant. You are not the first, second, third, or fourth person to apply for that grant. They probably, I mean, most granting agencies get thousands, thousands of uh, grant requests every month. Now, so the thing is, that's why uh, grant writers, the better they are, the more expensive they are because it's all about that proposal and it's all about that idea, how well developed it is. You know, just because you have something that is actually nonprofit um, eligible with the IRS and just because you have something that's really a good idea in your city or your state or whatever, your community needs it does not mean you're able to, I mean, you have to be able to convince the people with the money that this is a need and that this money is going to be put to good use. Now, here's the thing about the nonprofit status. The nonprofit status causes any donations to be tax deductible. And so it attracts not only grants, but donations from wealthy people, from private people, any, any private people that may want to give. I mean, it can be somebody that may even be on welfare, but they see what you're doing and say, I want to give $20 or something like that. It's more attractive to have your nonprofit status. Now, when it concerns getting a grant, the big thing is finding the grants and knowing the basic deadlines. The majority of money is given away in April and October of every year. There's money given away all year long but those are your hot, uh, your hot times for big grants. Now, so when you're looking for a grant writer, you need someone that's familiar with various agencies, that's good with the research, that's time, that is good at submitting timely um, grant proposals, and that will give you the follow-up necessary if the granting agency needs more information. So that's how you get a grant. Now. Here's the thing about churches. You do not necessarily need a 501c3. A lot of pastors run toward it. Every church is not, to me, a good candidate because there are certain things you give up when you um, have a nonprofit. And I'm not going to give you the whole kit and caboodle on this video because I'm already over my time. But I just want you to know that because of the faith-based initiative, there are grants just for uh, churches, and churches are automatically considered 
uh, nonprofit anyway by the IRS and by the state. Having that status gives you certain benefits, but it also comes with its cons. And you need to know the difference whether or not you need it, depending on what you're trying to do. So um, anyway, if you want to schedule a consult and possibly look at hiring me as your grant writer or to organize your business or nonprofit, because I do articles, bylaws, I do the whole nine yards. If you need that help, then first of all, look me up online. And um, my business website is www.lanicoenterprise, that's L-A-N-I-C-O-E-N-T-E-R-P-R-I-S-E dot com. And you can also email me at lucretia.hayes at gmail.com or at lanicoenterprise at gmail.com and let me know that you want to schedule um, a consult. Um, consults are generally $75 for the first hour and... I tell you exactly what you need to do, you know, and it's up to you to either hire me or someone else, but I can give you a basic overview of what's necessary. I hope this video was uh, a blessing to you. You all have a very productive day.